believe it's important to know your enemy. I believe it's, it's, it, it's important, the Bible says, that uh, not to be ignorant of the enemy's devices. Amen? Uh, we should be uh, awake and uh, guarding ourselves and, and aware of the fact that the devil lays traps for us. But to, to, to dwell on that and to meditate constantly, uh, like it's so easy right now to get caught up in this uh, CERN project, you know, with LHC, with this, you know, collider. You can become consumed. The world is being consumed with it right now. Uh, I've got videos on YouTube that I made um, that are viral, that are going viral because of this, because they're tagged with a, with a key word, CERN. And just, they go viral. Why? Because that's what people are consumed with. But if you put something on there that has to do with Jesus, or you have something uh, to do with the end times, uh, something to deal with uh, the book of Revelation, you don't see a whole lot of people looking that up. But when you start talking about something that interests them, right? So I have learned to be crafty in the sense of, like Paul said, I, I used, you know, I use craftiness. I used, uh, you know, the Bible says the children of this world are wiser in their generation than the children of light. And what does that mean? Folks, I'll tell you, uh, the world is very, very clever in the way that they present their message, right? And so you and I, need to learn to be wise as serpents, but yet harmless as doves. And so how do we do that? Well, if I'm wanting to get the truth to people, to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, what better way than to entitle my message with CERN, right? But then in the message, share with them the comparison between evil and good and share, don't go into the details of CERN and all that. No, no. Share the truth of God's word. Maybe put 5%, right, of, of what's going on with CERN. But the rest, the gospel, the truth. And I tell you, folks, I wouldn't say the ratio is, is as good as it can get because I think that God can help us to have a better ratio. But right now, I would say our ratio is probably, I don't know, probably 30%. For like a movie on CERN would be 30% for CERN and 70% for, for Jesus and uh, sharing the gospel. But I believe we can do better than that. I believe the ratio can get to, if God will help us, I believe we can get the ratio to 5% about CERN and 95%. We might even be able to do better than that. But you got to understand, Jesus used parables. Amen? He spoke in parables. He used natural, he talked about the things that were going on in the natural. He used natural creation and to describe spiritual truths. Um, Jesus didn't mince words when he called the Pharisees vipers. Right? Now, the main thing is, is that we must rebuke uh, things that are being done today that are evil because the Bible says, to not have anything to do with evil, but yet it says reprove them. And that word reprove doesn't mean just correct them or rebuke them. It means to point out their faults. Even Jesus points out our faults. Now, he doesn't do that to the world, does he? So I'm not pointing out these things so the world will see it. My message is not to the world. My ministry and the message I preach and the message I share on this broadcast is not to reach the world. My message is to help the church to understand uh, side by side what the enemy's up to so that you can see the counterfeit. So you can see a clear distinction between that which is real and that which is fake. Because I want you to know, folks, there is a strong delusion taking place in this hour. And if you don't know Jesus, and if you don't know the truth, you can be tripped up. There's no question about it. And that's the way Satan works uh, on us in our minds. He's trying to overtake our minds. So 
what was it that he did with Eve, right? He came to Eve and he said, hath God said? Right? Remember, Satan wants to get you first and foremost to, to question the word of God. That's his first thing he did with Eve. Get her to question the word of God. So what did he say? He didn't hit her with a statement, right? He came to Eve and he said, Hath God said? He hit her with a question. What was he doing? He was casting doubt. See, if she did not give the serpent any place at all, he never would have had a chance. I remember one time God said to me, he said, if the devil was to come in here right now, what would you do? And I shut up and I let the Lord give me the answer. And the Lord said, go for his juggler. In other words, you don't give the devil any place. You don't give him a chance. You and I tend to think sometimes that the devil's a pushover. He's not a pushover, people. And if you give him the smi any, any, any place at all, you're going to open the door and let him come right in. So we must guard ourselves against the enemy. So are we guarding ourselves against the very person of Satan, the very spirit of Satan? No, we're, we're guarding ourselves against the thoughts. The thoughts. So what does the scripture say how to deal with those fiery, thought, uh, fiery darts, those thoughts? It says the shield of faith to quench the fiery darts. So what is this shield of faith? When you're walking in faith, you don't question. You don't, I mean, the Bible even says love hopes all things. There is no room for questions or suspicion when you're walking in love. See, there is no room for for you to be suspicious of somebody else if you are walking in love because there's no fear in love. And so the devil wants to get you and I to be paranoid and to be suspicious like the world so that he can come in and control us. And so how do we guard ourselves against that? Well, there's no fear in love. So there's no reason to be suspicious, right? There's something better than suspicion, people. There's something better than being suspicious of somebody or something. And that is to know. Amen? You and I can know. We don't have to be suspicious. We don't have to be like the world and, and, and be suspicious. Oh, I wonder what the president's up to. Or I wonder what they're doing now. I wonder if, what their next uh, plan or their next plot, what they're getting ready to do. No, that's suspicion. We can know what they're going to do before they do it. Amen? So there's something better than suspicion. There's something better than being paranoid. We live in a very paranoid, schizophrenic, paranoid generation, people. And that's what they're trying to develop. They literally want the people to become paranoid. What happens when the people become paranoid is there's unrest. There's confusion. And that's what they want. They want the world to be paranoid, like paranoid schizophrenics. That's what they want. They want a generation of paranoid schizophrenics. But you and I can't be affected by that, brothers and sisters. You and I cannot allow the devil to overtake us. Amen? And the only way I know to stand against the wiles of the devil is that we must be dressed in the full armor of God and we must have that shield of faith to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Now, I know what it is. I've only had it happen to me once, but it was enough. I remember one time how after my wife was uh, unfaithful to me, how I laid on, back on my bed and I, all of a sudden a thought came into my mind. And literally began to try to consume me. I felt it taking over my mind. And I had to catch that. I had to guard myself against that. And it's true. You can put out those fiery darts with faith. 
It works. I've had it happen. I know what it is, people, for your whole mind, for your whole being to be, start being consumed with hellfire. I know what it is for that fire of iniquity to come in and start consuming your thoughts. But I also know what it is, hallelujah, for that shield of faith to quench that fiery dart. And it seemed like to me that thought that came, that fiery dart that the devil threw at me, was, it was just a matter, not even a minute, didn't even last a minute before it was put out. But it was long enough to recognize that it's real. When people become consumed with an idea or a thought, that is a fiery dart. Well, we don't need fiery darts from the wicked one. Amen? We don't need fiery darts from the devil. We don't need to become consumed with maybe an idea that we can't be saved or be consumed with a hellfire, a lies of the devil that says everybody else has hope, but you don't have hope or you've gone too far. Satan loves to hurl those fiery darts. You've gone too far. Jesus won't forgive you now. Or that fiery dart he loves to hurl at people. You've, uh, you've committed the unpardonable sin. You've committed uh, blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. He loves to hurl fiery darts that take away hope. But I want you to know, brothers and sisters, if you're dealing with a thought or an idea that's consuming you, that's causing you to lose hope, that's not from Jesus Christ. Jesus doesn't come to take away our hope. Jesus doesn't come to destroy. Jesus comes that we might have life and have it more abundantly, and he comes to give us hope, people. If you ever get a thought or an idea that comes into your mind and it's not bringing you hope, it's not from Jesus Christ. I will assure you of that. Amen? Praise God. Now, the danger in all of this is that you can be consumed with a lie. You can be consumed with a fiery dart. You can. It can happen. And God will allow it because it's up to you to choose if you're going to allow yourself to believe a lie of the devil, or are you going to believe the truth? It's your choice. It really does come down to your choice. And so we're told here in Philippians chapter 4, there is, a, there is the peace of God that passeth all understanding and shall keep your hearts and minds, amen, through Jesus Christ. Praise God. Hallelujah. Folks, there is a peace. Please listen to what I'm saying to you. There is a peace that surpasses, that surpasses. Well, Brother Joseph, I don't understand. I don't understand what I'm going through. I don't understand how the enemy's hitting me. I don't understand where he's coming from. I don't understand what he's up to. There is a peace. I don't understand why these people are treating me this way. There is a peace. I don't understand why this is that way or this is that, this is another way. Or, I don't understand. There is a peace, praise God, that surpasses all understanding. Amen? Hallelujah. There's a peace, brothers and sisters. Praise God. Jesus spoke peace to the storm. And he'll speak peace to your storm. But let me, let me tell you, that peace will not come without the truth. It's the word of God that brings peace. When Jesus spoke peace to the storm, he was speaking to the storm. So don't think that God's going to come along and just pour peace upon you if you don't believe him. No, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And right now, if you're in trouble and you're listening to this broadcast, you need a word from God. And maybe this is the word you need right now. Amen. Peace that surpasses all understanding will keep you and I. It'll keep our minds. It'll keep our hearts through Christ Jesus. Praise God. But it's up to us to think on things which are true. 